Hello everybody, Michael Silva here. Is winter coming? That's what we're going to talk about on today's video, focusing in on cryptocurrencies. We're going to be spending most of the time here on Bitcoin. We're going to go into the buy and sell indicator. We're going to look at a bearish charts, bullish charts, and we're going to also hop into some other cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum, Solano, Matic. Let's go ahead and get into today's episode. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We're taking a look at the monthly time frame for Bitcoin. And I wanted to just point out this trend line dating back from really mid-2015. And then you connect it to around the start of 2019 to the end of 2018 and kind of draw it through. Well, we've had one crack of this trend line previously, and that was actually during the pandemic. But we, as we know, we know that the Fed stepped in. They did QE Unlimited. Not only Bitcoin took off like a rocket ship, but also various tech stocks and funds like the ARK. Well, they started rallying up, got way, way, way overextended. We started pulling back here, back to this trend line. We bounce, and now we're starting to break down again. However, the difference between this breakdown taking place and this breakdown is, well, quantitative easing, QE, is going bye-bye, right? We are going into start tapering. Rates are going to go up. Is that going to affect the price of Bitcoin moving forward? Well, as you know, QE, like we stated previously, really did start lifting the market up and you know, it wasn't just Bitcoin. It was also various tech stocks, many stocks across the board. And if I just take a look at the NASDAQ composite and Bitcoin and overlay, so orange is Bitcoin. The NASDAQ composite is the black line. You can see that these, they have a very tight correlation with one another. This is just dating back a year, but you can see here a couple of times where Bitcoin found its low prior to the NASDAQ. And then it also found, well, it's high prior to the NASDAQ too as well. You can see the lowest spot before the NASDAQ here. So they do move hand in hand, but it does seem like almost like Bitcoin has a little bit of a, a head start. So in my thought process is if Bitcoin starts heading lower and takes out this low, that might also show that the NASDAQ composite might have some more further downside too as well. Okay. Now, if we take a look at the monthly, I'm sorry, the weekly time frame, this chart right here is from um, John Murphy and this was pretty interesting to me too as well. He applied a 52 week moving average, which is, you know, the year yearly moving average, and he just showed on the line chart, you know, potential shoulder, head, and right shoulder potentially um kind of rolling over right now. So this does line up looking over at that monthly time frame. If this were to crack this low right here, which is 35,280, that could spell out more downside. Um, you could also note that the RSI has been losing momentum as well as the MACD there. So hasn't been broken yet. And there are some bullish charts that I still want to talk about. But if we take a look at the weekly time frame and the candlestick form, you can see that there is a bull bear flag, sorry, forming right here. You can draw it a couple other ways where it might look like a rising wedge. Um, and you can see here in the prior move to the upside, this was actually a falling wedge. And if you take a look at the sailor to shift indicator during this time, it was turning up here. The sailor to shift indicator is actually turning down, but we'll go over that momentarily. You can see on the daily time frame, it did start rallying up here and ran into that 38.2% fib and started backing off. You can see here it is just channel trading. So it still can it can still recover and start heading higher. You can see a low, a higher low, a higher low, a high, a higher high, and then a higher high right here. So, you know, it is trending up right now, but just be mindful that if it does start cracking, that could spell out a little weakness. I want to go back to the monthly time frame just so you can kind of zoom in and see where price action is looking right now. And you can see here also just zooming in a little bit closer. You have a high, a higher high, a higher, sorry, a uh, uh, a low, a higher low, a higher low, and a higher low right here. And then you have this pretty clear area of resistance. It's, you know, just under the 50,000, which is right around 47,500 marker. And you can just assume here that if this trend line is broken, that might, you know, scare various traders and might force the price to come potentially test the low right here, or even this 30,000 level where we saw some prior price action. Because really the price hasn't been going anywhere. It's just been going kind of sideways here, but you can see that the momentum in 2022 did give way here. If you take a look at the PMO, price mo price momentum oscillator, the black line crossed down through the green and they're both pointing down. So you do have wind at your face on the longer time frame, which would indicate that this could definitely, definitely head lower here. Now, from a bullish perspective, if we look at a larger time frame, let's look at the quarterly time frame. 
the quarterly time frame, as we all know, back in 2015, we saw this big run up. It was on good volume. And then we started just going for, you know, multiple years, right? So basically 8, 2018, 2019, and even into 2020 started forming what's known as a bull pennant started or a triangle, right? It started putting in higher lows and lower highs coiling up, right? Expansion leads to contraction, contraction leads to expansion. But what we're seeing here is on the breakout, we're now seeing price digest. So this very well could potentially be another pennant that is forming. Now we did have one breakout right here, but then it got reverted, but you can see it connects this high, this open, this high, and right now where we currently, um, the, for the current quarter candles open too as well. Okay, so there's a very strong possibility that this could be forming dependent. Yeah, we head down a little bit lower, but hey, like we said, if that 35,000 level to 32,500, what, what exactly was that? Let me go back over here. Yeah, 35,280. I would say even potentially a little bit lower, like that 32,500 level. Um, if that's not broken, this could, this structure can technically still hold. And you gotta wonder if this has a full measured move to the upside breaks out just like it did here. And we're talking, this went from 10,000 up to around you know, 50, 60,000 right there. That's a huge, huge move. And a lot of people are calling for that Bitcoin 100,000. So if that's the case, um, I'm pretty sure that that is what's going to take the price there is that specific move. Let's take a look now though at the sailor to shift indicator. What I said here was the falling wedge, price action was turning up, but you can see here the bear flag that's forming and then the action on the rate of change between Bitcoin and gold, the sailor to shift ratio is turning down. It does look like we're gonna get a sell signal. So what does that mean? If the week closes out here, which we have one more trading day left before the candle goes to the next candle, if the next candle that forms goes below the low of this candle and we have that sell signal, that is when I get out of my position and I begin now for around a 5% loss because my last buy signal was right there. Price started to move up. I even felt a little nervous looking at the daily time frames. I was talking about, eh, maybe you should take some profits, but I just said, heck with it. I'll just let it, I'll let it go, stick to this strategy. Um, and you can clearly see here, now it's starting to head back around. So if, if I don't get stopped out and we do have a sell signal, what happens is I wait for the next week to form and then I just move my stop loss to the low of the prior for the next week. And then I just keep moving it up until the next buy signal triggers. Okay, so let's go ahead and head off to the um, FTX website to start looking a little bit closer on the daily price action. All right, so we are on the FTX.us website. For those that don't know, I am sponsored by FTX.us. It's my platform of choice as well. You can trade for up to 85% lower fees on this platform. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the owner, Sam Bankman fried um, You can follow him on Twitter. He's a very respectable um, figure in the cryptocurrency community. Um, when I'm looking here at the daily time frame, and by the way, I have links in the description below. You can also use, if you use the app, you can use Trader Mike as um, the code. But I'm looking at the daily time frame here for Bitcoin. And I want to just point out very specifically what it is that I'm seeing here. You can see this big move to the downside. Okay, this big red candle. And you can see the volume right here. So this is very interesting data, okay? So we had a big pull of volume, big pull in price action, and you can see price action is just kind of drifting up higher. But if you take note, look at the price action really drying up here. So as price is moving higher and volume is just drying up, remember what we talk about, expansion leads to contraction, contraction leads to expansion. So as price is trading within these inside trading candles, price is getting tighter, it's contracting, volume is contracting and drying up, and you can clearly see that it is diverging here, right? The market is obviously drifting higher, volume is drifting lower. So what you need to be very careful here for is a break when the volume expands. Volume will be expanding here soon. It could be early into next week. It could be tonight. I don't know. But if we do get a high volume break, be very careful because we could see another big red candle. Now, it's it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be breaking down. Given the context of the chart, the bears do have the upper hand. So what the bulls really need to do here is they need to start getting back above the 50-day moving average. So right now, the risk to the downside is a little bit greater than the reward to the upside. So we'll see here what the bulls can do. Let's take a look at Ethereum. All right, so here is Ethereum, very similar situation. We talked about this very same thing here 
um, on this specific day. And I believe this day we saw the big move down on increasing volume. The, the price action started drifting higher on declining volume. And then when it broke down, we saw the increased volume. So that is what I'm kind of just preparing everybody to potentially watch out for that could be next. Now, it's not guaranteed that that's going to happen, right? Um, from an Ethereum perspective, you know, this is where the price is actually holding the 50 day moving average. So, Ethereum, from a trend perspective here, looks a little bit stronger than the price of Bitcoin. So, if Ethereum can re pretty much, if Ethereum can recapture the the breakdown candle right here, 3217, the price of Ethereum will look a lot more enticing, but it's just not right there yet. So, still here in this perspective, you know, the bears have the upper hand but the bulls, they're still putting in a little bit of a fight here. So here is Solano. Solano hasn't been doing much. We did get a nice aggressive move out of the gates over here, but that since since that move, it's been reversed, um, you know, around 50 plus percent over there. And now you can see price action is kind of just grinding along that 50 day moving average. And it's very similar to what we're seeing in the other cryptocurrencies, right? You have this move to the downside on some, you know, pockets of distribution type volume. Um, now you're starting to see the volume really dry up here. So if we start breaking down below that 50 day moving average, that can set us up to go retest the lows um, to around that $80, $85 range here in Solano. Then we'll go over one more. This is Matic. This is, uh, you know, this is just hanging on for dear life right here. You can see we have a high, a lower high, a lower high right here. And you can just see that the price action has been, you know, it's just been holding, holding the line right here. So if you think about this, from you know perspective of you know where are the bulls well the bulls are right here and you can see that the bears have been just getting closer and closer to taking out their line of defense so and if you even zoom in even closer right here you can see price action dripped right expanded to the downside now it's contracting tight and you can just see price action is just coiling up right here getting ready for a move so uh, in my opinion, right, looking at this, obviously the bears have the upper hand. The bulls would have to reclaim, you know, a dollar, maybe even more, probably, yeah. honestly, they'd have to get back above that 50 day moving average, right? They, they, and even higher than that. Um, as it stands right now, it's just not looking all too strong. And a break of this trend line could really send the price down further, especially if that gets a lot of the bulls out and starts shaking a lot of weak hands. All right, everybody, that's all we got for you on today's episode. Hope it helped out and gave you some insight into what it is that I'm seeing here in the crypto markets. See you later.